Hello, my name is Patik Shah. I'm a senior big data architect on the Amazon Athena team at AWS. In this video, we'll be talking about visual query execution analysis in Amazon Athena. I'll briefly introduce Amazon Athena service and then we'll discuss the new visual query analysis tools followed by a demo. At the end, I will share some resources to help you get started. I'll start by sharing a few quick things about Athena. Athena is a serverless analytics query service that makes it easy for you to analyze your data lake. You can query your data without having to set up and manage any servers or data warehouses. Just point your data in Amazon S3, define the schema, and start querying using the built-in query editor. With Amazon Athena, you pay only for the queries that you run. You can save from 30% to 90% per query and get better performance by compressing, partitioning, and converting your data into columnar formats like Parquet or ORC. Customers running queries in Athena want to tune their queries to reduce the overall execution time and the data scan. They use Explain and Explain Analyze to study the query execution plan and computational cost. To make it easier to optimize the query, we have launched Visual Query Analysis Tools. So let's talk more about it. Query Plan helps understand how the query will execute before it's run. Until today, Athena supported generating explain plan in text, JSON, and GraphVis format. Customers had to pass the text or JSON output using custom tools to generate a visualization for better understanding of the query. Now, with a single click, you can generate the query plan in either logical or distributed forms on the Athena console. This helps validate the SQL statement and makes it easy to visually understand the flow of the query. Later on in the demo, we will see how easy it is to see the joins used in the query or validate predicate pushdown to the source or the operators that will be used in the query. Once the query has executed, the total runtime and data scanned by the query is displayed on the console. But customers are interested in learning more about the query execution details. To study computational cost for a given query, one of the options is to use Explain Analyze, which gives output in the form of text or JSON. This output can be verbose depending on the complexity of the query. It can be difficult to read and pass the output. To make this simpler and convenient, Athena now supports displaying query runtime statistics on the console after the query has completed the execution. It will display this time spent in the different phases of the query like queuing, planning, running, and service processing along with the size of input and output data. For queries that require deeper analysis, you can now examine granular query execution details presented as an interactive graph that allows you to explore the flow of data through our query. You can use it to identify bottlenecks in complex queries, inspect operators, and detailed execution statistics for each query stage. Trace the flow of data between stages to validate the impact of query predicates and much more. Let me show you a few examples on how you can use the query analysis tools. This is the Athena console. I have created a couple of tables in advance on the TPCH data set. Here is a simple query that we'll run. As you can see, uh, there is a new button over here called Explain. Clicking on it will generate a visual plan of the Explain. Let's go ahead and do that. This is a logical plan of the query that I just showed. Here you will see different operators used in the query and the flow of the operators. This is a plan used by Engine to execute the query. The first stage is a scan filter project that is responsible for reading the table and the details of the table can be found over here. As you can see, the table name is line item. The database name uses, used is TPCHDB. You can also see the predicate filters used. So for example, in this query, we have used l shape date, uh, and this is the filter value. You can see the subsequent stages uh, by reading from downwards to upwards, uh, which is evident from the flow of the arrows as shown over here. Now let's look at the distributed plan. This shows an execution plan in a distributed environment, which comprises of stages. Each stage is processed by one or more nodes. Stage flow represents a data exchange between cluster nodes. 
Once you click on this stage, on the right hand side you will see the operators that are used in this stage. Let's look at the operators in detail. So hit the expand button and you will be able to see all the operators used in a stage. For this stage, uh, we have only one operator which is scan filter project. But uh, there will be stages that would have more than one operators. So this is a good view uh, for such stages where you want to look into the details on the properties of the operators and stuff. Stage zero uh, is the final stage where output is gathered and written back to S3. Let's run the query. As you can see over here, there is a new tab called Query Stats, which shows details on how much data was processed, how many input rows were fed into the engine, uh, how many rows were uh, part of the output. For this query, it, it seems that there were around 600 million rows and the input size was 74 GB and the number of output rows produced were 248,000 and the size of the output file is around 2.37 MB. Also, you'll be able to see the query timeline, uh, which shows this different phase of the query that is queuing, planning, execution, and service processing. Queuing is a phase where query waits for resource allocation. Planning is a phase where it retrieves metadata from the table and schedules the task. Execution is the phase where it performs the actual operations on the engine. And service processing is a phase where uh, it takes time to upload the results to S3. For this query, like you can see, maximum amount of time was spent in the execution stage. Now let's say we want to see more details on uh, what all was done during the execution phase. Let's click on execution details. Like you can see, the execution stage comprises of a flowchart which shows different stages involved in the query. When a query is executed, the execution is divided into hierarchy of stages. Each query has a root stage which is responsible for aggregating the output from other stages. If you click on this stage, you will see different operators. An operator consumes, transforms, and produces data. For example, the scan filter operator fetches data from a connector, applies the filter predicate, and passes a subset of the data as input to next operator. The execution time shown over here is the time taken to execute the stage. This helps in determining which stage is expensive and in turn you can drill into the operator used in the stage to see if you can optimize the operator usage. For example, for this query we can see that maximum amount of time was spent in stage 1. So let's click on it. On the right hand side you will see the uh, again the similar stats like how much data was fed into this stage and how much of data was output by the stage along with the execution time. You can also see the operator details over here, which is similar to the one we saw in explain plan. Let's click the stage zero. So this is a stage which is responsible for aggregating all the outputs together and then write it back to S3. So let's click on expand all. Like you can see here, a remote source means that the data was fed from stage one and then it, the next operator was the output operator which was responsible for putting two columns, L order key and L part key. And as part of this, like the input size was around 2.37 MB and the output size was also similar. All right, so now let's see how we can use these details to optimize our query. For example, this is the query that joins two tables and performs count star operation. Let's hit the explain plan. Now you can see over here, there's a distributed plan of the query, but let's uh, check the logical plan first. As you can see over here, the query is performing join, and you can also see what all tables are being fed into the join. For this query, in the scan filter operator, we can see that the table that is being read over here is part table and and on the other side there is, there is a scan project stage which is responsible for reading table line item 
This layout tells that the table part is on the left, left hand side of the joint, whereas table line item is on the right hand side of the joint. As per the best practices, the correct order of joint should be in a way such that the table with highest amount of data should be on the left hand side of the joint, the table with least amount of data should be on the right hand side of the joint. If you know your table sizes in advance, this layout helps validate that the correct join order is followed. For the demo purpose, I used a simple query, but uh, if you have a complex query, this layout will be useful in validating the orders of the join is correct. Then after the join stage, uh, there is aggregate partial stage followed by uh, some exchanges and then again an aggregate stage. So this is uh, for counting the number of records that is being output as part of the join operation. And finally, there is an output stage, which is responsible for writing results back to S3. Now let's study the execution details of this query. As you can see over here, there are four stages in word. Let's see the details of stage one. The stage one comprises of inner join, uh, which gets data from the remote source two, which is the stage two and remote source 3 which is the stage 3. As you can see uh, the stage 2 is feeding 20 million rows and stage 3 is feeding 600 million rows. Now let's see what table is involved in stage 2. So in stage 2 it's reading the table part uh, and in stage 3 it's reading the table line item. Now, let's come back to the join order again. As you can see the, that the table part is small over here since it's only outputting 267 megabytes of data, whereas stage three has output 7.8 gigabytes of data. So here, the order of join does not follow the best practice, which can be validated by the execution details. Let's go back and try to change the order of the join and see the difference in the execution time of stage one. All right, let's check what table was used in stage two. So in stage two over here, it's, used, it's reading data from table line item. And in stage three, it's reading data from table part. So here now, uh, stage two is feeding 7.8 gigabytes of data and stage three is feeding 267 megabytes of data. So uh, this is like the correct order of join now, which is, uh, which means that stage two is, which is reading table from line item is on the left hand side of the join and stage three, which is reading part table is on right hand side of the join. And as you can see, the execution time of stage one is 28 minutes, whereas the execution time in the previous query was, let's go back and check. Yeah, it was 40 minutes for stage one. So the correct order of the join helps in reducing the time spent in that operation and the execution details will help you optimize that. Now let's take example of, an, of a query where number of partitions is being bottlenecked. In this table, call one, is the partition field which has around 100,000 partitions. This query took around 18 seconds to run. As you can see, the query has filtered on call one between one and 100. Now let's check the query stats. Here, the time spent in planning phase is 17 seconds which comprises of 94% of the query execution time. In order to reduce the time spent in planning phase, that is retrieving metadata from Glue catalog, there are a couple of ways to optimize it. You can use partition indexing on the Glue table, which will push down the filter, which is between one and 100 to the catalog, and it would only retrieve the metadata ranging from one to 100. I've already uh, run an example query on this. So here it's again, similar table where call one is the partition field and the filter is also the same. It has around 100,000 partitions. As you can see, the time spent in planning phase was 565 milliseconds, which has reduced drastically from the previous table where 
the partition indexing was not enabled. You can also use partition projection to reduce time spent in planning phase. This way, the query stats help you optimize the partitioning used in, for your table and query. In this example, let's examine the group by class behavior for this query. As you can see, we are using four columns in the group by class. I already run the query in advance and it took around 35 seconds to run. Let's see the execution details. From this execution details, we see that the stage two spent maximum time in executing. Let's see what's going on. So this stage has scan project operator, which fed the output to the aggregate operator. This aggregate is being performed as part of the group by clause on the four columns, which we can see over here. Now, let's say we want to reduce the runtime of this query from 35 seconds. So what can we do? The group by operator distributes rows based on the group by columns to worker nodes, which hold the values in memory. As rows are being ingested, the group by columns are looked up in memory and the values are compared. So in order to optimize the performance of group by, you can limit the number of columns within the select and group by clause to reduce the amount of memory acquired to store because rows are held in memory and aggregated for the group by clause. Let's see an example where the number of group by class have been reduced to two compared to four. As you can see here, we are using only two columns in the group by class. And this query took around seven seconds to run. Let's check the execution details. As you can see, the stage two ran in one hour and 18 minutes, uh, where the group by class had only two columns, like seen here. Whereas the query where the number of columns in the group by class were four, the stage ran in two hours and 20 minutes. And the output data was around 38 gigabytes. Whereas for the query that only two columns, the output data was four gigabytes. So overall, this query ran faster compared to the query with four columns in the group by class. This way, the execution details will help you optimize different operators used in your queries. To help you get started, here are some resources. The links for these resources are in the description panel of the video. The What's New post and Athena documentation have more details on the features we discussed today. The blog on top 10 performance tuning tips is a good reference for optimizing the Athena queries. Thanks for watching this video and your continued use of Athena. If you have questions or feedback to share, please reach out to us at the displayed email address. Thank you.